Now, uh, in the Ohio State House, a uh, union guy was was pounding away here. Let's listen to this. Hat tip, eye blast, cut three, go. Tea Party's a bunch of <laughs> sucking corporate Republicans. You want to crush the working people in this country. Now, why you guys support us, the rich. Why do you put us all in one group like that? Oh, look at you. You're doing your Sing Heil thing down here. That's called SB5. Sing Heil what? Sing Heil what? What's, what's I understand that is one of the august uh, teachers in the state of Ohio. No doubt an English teacher. Then in the state capital in Kansas, Topeka, Kansas, this from the Topeka Capital Journal, Kansas Republicans accused organized labor activists of forcing female legislators to endorse sexually explicit and degrading comments while passing into the House chamber before a vote to end automatic deductions from paychecks for union political causes. Democrats and a representative of the Kansas AFL-CIO disputed the GOP claims, and both sides pointed to video evidence to support their interpretation. House Speaker Mike O'Neill, Republican Hutchinson, said the vocal crowd crossed the line by engaging in a salty commentary outside the House chamber by shouting inside the chamber when the paycheck bill came to a vote. Quote, there were comments of sexually explicit nature directed at both female legislators and female staff, he said. That's the most disrespectful display from the gallery I've seen in 27 years that I've been here. He said two union sympathizers attempted to intimidate a male House member into voting against the measure, which was passed 75 to 46 and forwarded to the Senate. As word spread of tension on the third floor of the State House, House members were instructed to enter the chamber by a back staircase. No one was injured and there were no arrests. You know what? You know what, ladies and gentlemen? I want you to look at this violence. I want you to look at this language. I want you to look at this intimidation. The Democrat Party and their stooges have been unleashed to be aggressive, to be threatening, to intimidate our public officials, to try and reverse the last election. I look around the world at these dictators trying to hang on. Does it not remind you of that? It reminds me of that. I look at the the anger and the outrage. People who've been in power, that is, these folks who've been in control, who've lined their pockets, and they don't want to let go. We'll be right back. I just got an urgent email from my union. I shouldn't even say my union. I'm required to pay to this union. I can't stand this union. I have nothing to do with this union. I don't even know what I'm paying for. Here's my urgent email. God's honest truth. I just got it. Rally in solidarity with Wisconsin workers. AFTRA members are standing united with our fellow union members in Wisconsin and throughout this nation as we work to protect the basic principle that Americans have an inalienable right to a fair living wage, decent benefits, safe working conditions, and a voice in our workplace. They speak as if this is uh, 1933. I just read you the email from the retired police officer from California. Is that what we're talking about? We're talking about trying to stop the whole system from collapsing. The taxpayer's broke and has had enough. Now let me go on with the propaganda from my own union. Upcoming solidarity. Ra- now there's solidarity as if this is Poland rallying against the communists. Sorry, it's the other way around. We're rallying against the communists. Then they list all these cities. Let's see, they're having, I'm not going to give out specifics, but they're having a rally in Albany. This is Saturday, tomorrow. Boise, Burlington, Chicago. Oh, two rallies in Chicago. Cool. Dallas, Hudson, Wisconsin, L.A., Madison, Milwaukee, 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 three. These are people, keep in mind, who can't work on the weekends because they want to be with their families. Nashville, New York, Oshkosh, big gosh. Plattsburgh, New York, Portland, Oregon, San Diego, St. Croix Falls, Wisconsin, and Williamsburg, Virginia. Now, Sunday, we're supposed to be rallying as well in Asheville, North Carolina, Fredonia, Wisconsin, Madison again, West Bend, Wisconsin, and Jackson, Mississippi. And if that's not enough, we have all kinds of events scheduled, my union tells me, for March. Phoenix, Amherst, Massachusetts, Rochester, 
Rock Tavern, New York. More in Nashville, Orlando, two in Orlando. Austin, Chattanooga, Houston, Knoxville, Memphis, and Nashville again. What the hell's going on in Nashville? Seems to me there's a lot of other people we can do without in the workforce if they have all this time to be agitating, I think. A lot more cuts can be made. I just have a very basic view of things. I believe in individual liberty. Somebody wants to join a union, fine. I'm talking about private sector unions now. But if, what if they don't want to join a union? Why should they be forced to? Because, Mark, they're scabs otherwise. Well, that's what you say. Why is competition okay on the uh, enterprise side, but competition is not okay on the labor side? I don't like these little monopolies here and there who have such sway over neighborhoods and communities. I don't think it's right. And it's not. It's out of control. It's out of hand. But here's the bottom line. I don't need to persuade you. You've already told your representatives this. You've already voted, and you're going to do it again. What's happening here is that the Democrat Party, this isn't even the labor movement, the Democrat Party is in the middle of a convulsion. It's convulsing. It's never seen its power challenged this way by you, the people. They don't know what to do about it. So they're bringing out the thugs. They're uh, storming state capitals. Gee, I wonder if this has anything to do with Obama and Solinsky. What do you think? No way, Mark. That can't be true. Isn't this interesting that all this goes on when this guy's president of the United States, when this used to be his area of expertise, rabble-rousing? Yes, I think so. Let us go to Tommy back at Indiana University. Uh, Tommy, how are you? Hi, Mark. It's uh, good to talk to you. It's an honor to talk. Uh, I'm honored to speak with you. Yes, it is. Thank you, my friend. Um, I, I started listening to you during the 2008 presidential election, and no one has been um, a bigger influence on my understanding of liberty and limited government than you. Um, I've Thank read you. Uh, Liberty and Tyranny, Men in Black, and Rescuing Sprite, and I loved them all. Thank you for writing them. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate that. Um, and uh, I just had a one one question. Um, you know, I'm mm-hmm. on a, a liberal college campus, and. Um, I'm hearing um, the main argument I'm hearing against the Defense of Marriage Act is uh, um, they reference uh, Article 4, Section 1, the full faith and credit um, mm-hmm. for public acts, records, and judicial proceedings. Of, that's, of it, that's exactly why the statute was passed, to address that. Okay. So uh, um, they, they're saying it's uh, unconstitutional. Um, it, um, how, how does the, the statute kind of get past? Um, Article 4, Section 1, I, I, I just I don't really what, what What they're saying is, and I'm concerned about it myself, how does a statute trump a constitutional provision? Is that what they're saying to you? Uh-huh. But, and it is, of course, a very good question, and I'm not sure. But that doesn't mean you don't defend it. But you can go back and tell your the, these libs, say, okay, so then you'll support a constitutional amendment, I take it. <laughs> a constitutional amendment that defines marriage... And they'll tell you, no, 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 we believe in states' rights, because all of a sudden they believe in states' rights. They never have before, but now they do. They believe in federalism. So they want it every way. Okay, well, if the high court in Massachusetts rules that same-sex marriage is constitutionally protected by a four-to-three vote, uh, ask them if they believe in the the notion of, um, of liberty. So does that mean that a decision by four people appointed to the high court of Massachusetts should determine... The outcome of this issue in every other state in the union? To me. What's that? It doesn't seem right to me. But that's what that's what people are trying to prevent. Yeah. And so um, this is why I do favor a constitutional amendment that allows that protects states because that was what was intended. And mm-hmm. he, here's the thing: I was talking to a buddy of mine earlier, right before the show. The left looks for every opportunity, every crack in the system to exploit. So they know that full faith and credit clause is there. So they bring these cases in the most liberal towns, the most liberal states they can find. They try and get a ruling that, that they support. And even though that provision is there really to make sure that each state's rules are honored by another state, what they want to do is exploit that and basically impose the will of a handful of individuals on the rest of the people of the country. That's what they want to That is what Obama has decided he's going to do. He's going to back off of Section 3, which is essentially the whole law, of the uh, of, of the Defense of Marriage Act, not defend it anymore, uh, which means that these, these decisions in these states 
will ultimately have to be honored by other states. So what he's doing is he's nationalizing through the back door same-sex marriage. I don't think people understand this. And he's doing it in a, an extremely dangerous and sleazy way. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's one of those So things. just tell your liberal yeah. friends, then join me, Tommy, in, a, in proposing a constitutional amendment that does not allow one state to impose its will on another as applies to this issue. And then watch how fast they say, no, I don't support that either. <laughs> because they support tyranny. They just want to get their views imposed on everybody else, regardless of religious objections, regardless of, of constitutional issues. They don't care. All right, my friend, thank you for your call. This is what we're up against. Uh, by the way, my union, after you didn't ask us to vote on whether or not you should be using your funds to be encouraging people to take off and uh, be joining these rallies. But keep sending me the emails. I'll keep reading them. You dumb you-know-whats. Here we go. Gaila in uh, Dallas, Texas, the great WBAP. Go. Good afternoon. How you doing, Mark? All right, my friend. I was a union member and a Democrat for about 38 years. I talked to you once before. I'm not... I, I'm just wondering, I, I'm not a, I don't like the unions anymore. They stabbed me in the back, and also it just broke my heart to see them walking arm in arm with the communists. I mean, I, I just, it just infuriates me. But my question is, couldn't Governor Walker take the collective bargaining thing out of the budget bill and pass it with just a simple majority without having to have a quorum? Well, maybe. My guess is they're, they're huddled with their lawyers trying to figure out all that stuff. And couldn't Congress... But, but hold on, let me slow you down now. What they're trying to do, I'm guessing, is to make sure that, yes, they can vote any way they want, but they want to make sure it's bulletproof from a challenge to their uh, liberal courts. So they've got to be thinking about that while they're, uh, uh, while they're proceeding legislatively. So they may be able to get something passed, but they have to make sure it's bulletproof from a legal challenge, if you see my point. Well, I was really disappointed today. I stay on the Internet and do a lot of research, and I always thought that Congress is what made the collective bargaining for federal employees, but it was by executive order by JFK. That's exactly right. This is how, <laughs> this is how these things work. Yeah, I tell you what, we need to do away with executive orders for everybody. You know, they don't Well, executive orders were intended to be like administrative acts where a president issues an executive order telling his agency, for instance, his... Uh, his employees, the executive branch, to participate in this charity program or to make sure they comply with this federal law. But instead, what we have is, okay, you can do this and you can do that. Thank you for your call. And now you see TSA is being unionized. Like they don't have enough protection. Yeah, beautiful. I know, I come off as a union basher, and I'm really not. I like the FOP. I don't like the national leadership. They tend to go lib. I'm talking about the local guys. I know a lot of these local guys. They're different. And by the way, all you union guys and gals out there, don't you get sick and tired of your unions giving 95% of your money to uh, liberal Democrats and to Obama and all the rest? Aren't you sick of that? I mean, what we need is a revolution among the union members, to be perfectly honest. But what do I know? Now, um, I've got here an article from the Daily Caller, John Rosamondo. This is very uh, stomach-turning. Communist and socialist groups, including the Maoist Revolutionary Communist Party, the Communist Party USA, Trotskyite Socialist Workers Party, and the Democrat Socialists of America are voicing their support for the public sector unions protesting Wisconsin Republican Governor Walker's plan to curtail their bargaining abilities. The communist and socialist groups have parroted many of the union talking points being used by the unions on their websites and in their publications, such as those accusing the governor of trying to break their unions. They've also compared Walker to former Egyptian dictator Hosni Mubarak. So what we're seeing now on the streets is an absolute freak show of nutjobs. Quote, Egypt, whose revolution has been a constant source of inspiration here, reflects in signs and ch chants, reflected in signs and chants, and Walker's new nickname, Governor Mubarak, an article reads from the International Socialist Organization's website called Webzine. The Webzine also describes the union's protest of Walker's plans to force a vote on curtailing public sector unions as class war in Wisconsin, an affront to the standard of living of working people. Gee, my own union just sent out an email saying exactly the same thing. How about that? The formerly Soviet-backed Communist Party USA, or CPUSA, echoed similar talking points, using the deficit as a scare the right-wing corporate Republicans are on a fast track 
to defeat every initiative of the Obama administration, and it goes on. Isn't it interesting that the formerly Soviet-backed Communist Party USA backs President Obama? Wonder why that is. We'll be right back. 